Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the stream. My name is Kevin. We are still working on our ESP32 product creation journey. And today is going to be what I think is a very helpful stream, massively boring stuff that nobody wants to do, but you have to do. We're going to be talking about harmonized tariff schedule or harmonized tariff codes, um, HTS codes. And ugh, this stuff sucks. But um, I spent about three hours on this today to figure out what my HTS code is for our product. And so I think it would be helpful to show kind of after spending three hours how it could maybe take you like an hour to figure out what yours is, maybe even less depending on the product. And we'll go through that here in a minute. So first of all, what's an HTS code? We're going to talk about this a little bit more, but an HTS code is a like a universal code that is applied to your product that you sell. Um, well, let me step, take a step back. If you remember, I'll link it up here. I did a stream a little while back about HTS codes and how I got hit with a massive tariff that I wasn't expecting and didn't realize I was going to have to pay on raw materials. So this is everything that is sold and transfers hands internationally has an HTS code. Um, this is... Uh, based on that code, I think the codes are universal regardless of country, but each country tariffs HTS codes with its own policy. So what is maybe um, cost me 20% tariff to import to the United States, I think, I believe, don't hold me to this, I believe the HTS code's the same if you live in Panama, it's just that your Panamanian government would determine a different tariff schedule on how to charge on that as you import it. So this this happens when you import things. So like raw materials that are coming in, like the printed circuit boards and the enclosures and the batteries, all that stuff that I ordered raw material wise has an HTS code. It comes into the United States. I have to pay a tariff on that. And now that I've assembled all that into a product, this now has its own HTS code, which I have to apply if I'm going to ship internationally, which happened today. Our first order came in from Canada. We've started running some targeted ads in Canada because hockey is huge in Canada. And I never shipped anything. Well, I have shipped stuff to Canada before, but I didn't realize like there's a bunch of stuff with customs and things like that. And ideally you need to have your HTS, sometimes referred to as an HS code on the customs information so that as it goes into Canada, they can tariff that however they want. And so um, this is something that it's helpful for you to know, not just what the HTS codes are on all the raw materials that you may be shipping in, but then once you have your final product, this has its own HTS code, um, which is likely going to be different from the raw materials. And so have that and then now you're ready to put it on all and ship internationally. So that's why it's important to know what it is. Now, figuring out what your HTS code is, is a totally different story that I spent three hours on today. And so let me show you some of the process here. Now let's switch screens. Here we go. Okay. Again, and I apologize. This is for the United States. Um, this... I mean, I like I said, I believe all of this is me learning, so don't hold any of this as like the end truth, end all be all truth. Um, like I said, I believe the HTS codes are universal because, again, uh, anyway, I, I don't know. I'm guessing this is the way to find it if you live in the United States or if you're shipping things to the United States. So uh, we'll start with that. I'm, I'm confident about that. Okay, so you come here to this HTS dot uh, usitc.gov and you see harmonized tariff schedule 2021 basic revision 12 and this is where I first landed um, because my package went out today and I don't know what the HTS code is and I left it blank which means customs may or may not it's going to Canada we have a pretty good trade relationship with Canada customs may open it up and assign it an HTS code or I don't know I don't know what's going to happen hopefully that customer gets their puck holder but I figured this is something that we should resolve so that going forward, uh, we're ready to go. So you land here, HTS search. And it's like, I don't know, what would you call? And this is, you know, is this something, this is brand new. Nobody's ever seen one of these before. This is a completely new innovative product. But 
it's not like I invented a completely new thing, but I feel like I kind of did. So if you take this screen out, what do you have? You have a plastic sports memorabilia item. It's just a, it's a chunk of plastic that can, you know, and by itself is maybe a nice, you could slap a sticker on it. And it could be a puck holder. That would be a different HTS code than what I believe I came up with, which is, I'll show you here in a minute, than this, which has a display in it. But you're not going to find smart puck holder or smart merchandise or anything like that. And so let me show you what an HTS search looks like. So I came in here and I was like, hey, let's, um, let's type in... Uh, electronics and you hit enter and uh, you hit search and I don't know what it's going to do right now but earlier today I let this please wait sit here for about 30 minutes and it never returned and I think it's a bug because if you put other terms in here you'll get like a very quick no results found so I don't know why like electronics breaks the internet here the the government internet. Uh, but now like wild sing, please wait. Like I can't come in and I can't type anything in this search. Like I'm clicking in here. I can't change it. It's like, it's never returning. So I wasn't having much luck with that. Um, however, if you change the query to have quotes, which they give you some things like HTS search supports the following functionality. It's like, um, contains all enter one or more words, each within double quotes and separated by a single space. I mean, let's try tennis shoes. I wonder what like we'll actually get with that. So I've got to like drop this query out and hit enter again. And let's just try and type it the way they, they did it. Tennis and then shoes and hit search. Please wait. Like I've never, I played with this for like 30 minutes today, maybe 20 minutes. I either got in like an immediate, there are no results or it just says, please wait forever. Like, and you know, call support for the U S government. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is not what you're going to want to do. Don't even waste your time on this because I think I found a, at least what was for me, a better way to go about this. So we're going to close this tab right out. The next place I ended up was this hts.usitc.gov slash current. And you want to make sure you're looking at the most recent information. I did find a couple of things. If you do Google searches where like you'll get a PDF, but the date on it's like 2013 or 14, like this stuff is constantly changing. So you want to make sure you're looking at the most up-to-date information right here at the top. You've got full document. I'd click on it and download it, but the government servers don't deliver things up very quickly. And the document is gigantic. I have it prepared here. So let's click on the full document. And no big deal, 4,079 pages. Harmonized Tariff Schedule of the United States, Basic Revision 12. And you can see right here, the, the publication is December 2021. So this, this is the definitive HTS document that's current for the United States. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, you could scroll through this. I recommend you don't because what they have done over here, and I'll link this up in the description, is if you come down here, your HTS code is going to be in one of the 80 some chapters that they have here. And this is a way that you can immediately start to rule out. Like if you look at section one, live animals, animal products, that's not us. So I don't even need to look through chapters one, two, three, four, and five. And so this is where I don't recommend you downloading the full document to search for your HTS code. Just start coming through this list. Um, you're going to skip thousands of pages. Section two, vegetable products, not us. So I can skip all of that animal or vegetable fats and oils and their cleavage products, prepared edible fats, animal or vegetable waxes, like the stuff that like who writes this stuff? I don't know, but good for them. So we're going to come all the way down here to uh, products of the chemical or allied industries. Nope. So we're already skipping like 38 chapters, plastics and articles thereof rubber. So like plastics and articles thereof, this may be, I didn't, I didn't go back and look. This is probably where the HTS code for like the enclosures is going to be um, probably in chapter 39 somewhere, but not what we're looking for here. Oh, but, but if it was just a puck holder without a screen, 
that held a puck that was like there for a sticker, the HTS code's probably here in chapter 39. So you just open up the chapter 39 doc, start going down it. Okay, check this out. Fur skins and artificial fur, manufacturers thereof. Articles of animal gut other than silkworm gut. Like there's a lot of, as you read through this, it is kind of entertaining. There's like a very specific thing, but not very even more specific thing. Um, wood and articles of wood, not us. We're still going, we're still going. Textile and textile articles, uh, footwear, headgear. This is where a lot of, I think, traditional sports memorabilia would be like your hats and your shirts and um, things like that. Uh, articles of stone, plaster, cement. Nope. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I came all the way down here. I originally skipped chapter 84 because um, I saw nuclear reactors. I'm like, yeah, I'm importing nuclear reactors. Uh, that's HTS code 84 dot something or other. Um, but, and, and that's where you need to read these very thoroughly because they stack things together that you might not be expecting. So nuclear reactors, boilers, machinery and mechanical appliances, parts thereof. So if I recall correctly, let's just click on 84 here. Um, I believe 84, I might actually have it open. Uh, this is 85, 84. Like you can see here, 8401 nuclear reactors. But if we scroll down, the other thing that's in 84, let's come way down here. Um, machine tools for deburring. Like if you read nuclear reactor and you're like, oh, nope, I'm in the wrong industry, didn't open it, you're going to miss the thing that you were looking for. Because 84, actually, I've got some highlighting down here. Right in here, 84, oh, what is it? Uh, tools for working in the hand. Uh, where is it? Like there's stuff, I believe in this section around telecommunications and it even has like some mentions of Wi-Fi and stuff. Cause I was looking through here and thought that maybe my product fell under there. But anyway, the point of that, I'm not going to bore you with all that is make sure you read these headings completely. Cause like I said, I looked at nuclear reactors, moved on, but there were some applicable things over here in mechanical appliances. So make sure you read these. All right, so right here you have electrical machinery and equipment and parts thereof, sound recorders and reproducers, television image and sound recorders and reproducers and parts and accessories of such articles. If you are making an Internet of Things device, you're probably in chapter 85. Maybe not always because again like there's industry specific things like aircraft you might be making an aircraft related iot device that might be in chapter 88 here but um there's also down here i i was actually looking through this as well toys games and sports requisites parts and accessories thereof and i was like oh maybe that's it miscellaneous manufactured articles so again i spent hours reading through these things but ultimately we ended up in i believe 85 um oh it was 8471. Actually, I think it would be helpful to go back and look at that. 8471. Let's scroll. Oh, here we go. 8471 is automatic. Let's see. Can you, it's kind of hard for you to see that. Um, let's go big. There we go. Automatic data processing machines and units thereof, magnetic or optical readers, machines for transcribing data onto data media in coded form, and machines for processing such data not elsewhere specified or included. And so you can see there's like things with cathode ray tube in here. There's like monitor stuff. I'm not sure if this is going for things like VCRs or like Blu-ray or things like that, players. Um, but because I mean, it mentions keyboards, input and output devices. So I was stuck in here for a little bit. But um, anyway, these things get crazy specific um, for you to find your HTS code. And so as you're going through here, your HTS code is going to be right over here. It's going to be 8470.21.00. And then there's a, um, a suffix that, you know, may apply depending again on how specific these gets these get. So chapter 85, I have open over here. Okay. And let's scroll all the way to the top. What you're going to want to do once you found the chapter is go through the chapter and find your HTS code. Like skip all this stuff up front. 
find your HTS code, but then come back to the top afterwards. And the reason for that is because there will be a bunch of like heading 8509 covers only the following electromechanical machines of the kind commonly used for domestic purposes, floor polishers, food grind, like they list out some, like, if you came up with this HTS code, it doesn't apply if your thing is this or has this property or, you know, specific details. And so after you think you found it, come back up to the top here and look through and see, oh, I came up with 8523. It, it, it clarifies some definitions that may bump you to a different HTS code. So just something to be aware of. Um, okay. So where did I end up? So as I'm going through this, I'm looking at, uh, there's a whole section of, and what is it, 8528? Uh, let's go down to 8528. And let me, sorry, I left something out there. The thing that I did is once I knew what chapter I was in, I came, I passed all this like upfront stuff. And then you get to this sort of table format right here, 8501. That's going to be the first one. And you just go through it. Electric motors and generators. Nope, that's not it. And then what you can do is you can see everything under that is a specification getting more explicit of an electric motor and generator. And so it'll be like motors of an output exceeding, of not exceeding 37.5 watts. Let's blow this up so it's a little bigger too. Uh, synchronous value not over $4 each. Like that got super specific and that's 8501.10.20.00. Um, but what you can do is while you're scrolling through this is like 8501, if that's not it, you can kind of, quickly um, as you're scrolling scan and get to 8502. Most of the time they're at the top of the page. Sometimes they're in the middle, 8501. We're still in 8501. So like I can scroll really fast through those because it's not, all of these are more specific versions of motors. Okay, 8501. So, okay, there we go. Boom, 8502, you read it. Electric generating sets and rotary converters. Not even close. Skip all the 8502s. Oh, here we go. 8503. Parts suitable for use or uh, solely or principally with the machines of heading 8501 or 02. Not that. And so that's the process. I'm just, I'm going through. It, it would be nice. And there are lots of third-party sites that will do searches for you. Those make me nervous because who knows if they have the most recent information. Um... I don't know. I, I just, this is the way I prefer to do it. This is the source. Like this is from the government. You're going to get exactly the information. Okay. Um, as a fun fact, I did open something just for fun because I was looking for like, I don't know what, what should I use this site right here? Like gave Amazon echo. Oh, she's listening. Don't speak too loud. Um, what what's the HTS code for that? Well, it looks like it's eighty five eighteen twenty nine. So let's take a look at that in chapter eighty five eighty five eighteen twenty nine. So we're gonna come way down. Um, we can actually just do a search eighty five eighteen. Okay, the eighty five eighteen category is microphones and stands thereof, loudspeakers, whether or not mounted in their enclosures, headphones and earphones, whether or not combined with a microphone, and sets consisting of a microphone and one or more loudspeakers, audio frequency, electric amplifiers, electric sound amplifier sets, parts thereof. Um, and shoot, I've already forgotten what the 8518.29, okay. 8518.29. And so... Apparently that's other without housing, having a frequency rate, not 2940. So it's just other. So it's considered this thing, 85, 18, 29, other. 29, was it really? Yeah, 85, 18, 29. Okay. So, and you know, that sounds about right, right? Like these Amazon devices are microphones and stands thereof, loudspeakers, whether or not mounted in their enclosure. I mean, that's, that's, and so you're not going to find, there's some things where like shoes or things like that, where you'll get a very specific one, but otherwise it's like, what's the class of device that uh, we're dealing with here? Okay. So, oh, we're out of time, 20 minutes. This stuff, again, I hope watching this 20 minute video can save you two hours if you're looking for your HTS code. Where did we end up? for our device. Um, and a quick note on this, 
when I was dealing with the HTS tariff things, I was scrambling because of the way these things are worded, you could lump into different categories. Don't do that. Like you're asking for trouble with the government and that's the last entity you want to have trouble with. So you want to come up with the best HTS code that closely matches. And what they recommend is if a customs agent would open it up and hold it in their hands and look at it, would they agree with the description that sits next to the HTS code looking at your device? If you try and like get a loophole, because if you're looking at this document, you can see you've got the rates of duty. And this one says free, not really. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's general, there's special duty. And then there's just column two, which I thought was like, oh my goodness, everything's got a 35%. But if you look at the, I believe when I looked at this, this column two is a special tariff in addition to other tariffs. If the country of origin for the United States is Cuba or North Korea. Uh, I believe is what the 35% is here. This is not the standard tariff rate, but free is also not the standard tariff rate. This stuff is complicated. I know, but it's like if you're making a product to sell, like you got to deal with it. Okay, so back to where we ended up. 85, 43, 70. 85, 43.70. This is where I ended up for my device. I went through the whole display monitor section. It's really for TVs and computer monitors and uh, replacement monitors. Even though this has a display on it, it just really didn't fall into those categories, I felt. And so where we ended up was 8543, which is electrical machines and apparatus having individual functions not specified or included elsewhere in this chapter, which I looked through every single one of the top level headings and I do not think it was included elsewhere in the chapter. Uh, that also includes parts thereof. And so 853070, which is other machines and apparatus. And then you can say physical vapor deposition apparatus. Like it's not that. Electric synchros and transducer, transducers, flight data recorders. Like this stuff's crazy. Which is also in the same category as defrosters and demisters with electric resistors for aircraft, like flight data recorder. Um, and I ended up at... Um, 90, no, 90, 89, right here. So this is where, this is the HTS code that I settled on for our product until further notice, which is other device, electric apparatus, not, uh, not specified other portable battery operated electronic readers for recording and reproducing text, still images or audio files. You can see the text right on the screen there. It's a portable battery operated electronic reader. I know like you're maybe thinking like Kindle. I actually think Kindle and things like that tablets would fall under a completely different HTS code because again, this is electric apparatuses not specified or included elsewhere. I think tablets and like iPads and things would be specified elsewhere. And um, it does um, reproduce text. Now recording text is is an interesting thing because it is, it does record, the, like it does save text on here to be displayed. So I felt like this was the best HTS code that fit our product. Um, if the government wants to tell me to use a different one, let's have that conversation. But as well as still images or audio files, remember when it first, like I can display QR codes on it. So I felt like this was um, the closest one for my device. You can see like portable interactive electronic education devices, primarily designed for children, like. Again, who writes this stuff? Uh, so anyway, that's that's my that's my HTS code that I will put on our customs forms going internationally. Now, um, final thoughts. Oh, you can see here it says, oh, the tariff is free or the duty rate is free, but it says note 40. And down here in 40, it says C9903-8815. And this is where I get totally lost. I'm not even gonna tell you what it is, but this is the chapter, chapter 99. And so if we come to chapter 99, 03-8815, it's like, except as provided in headings, like go look at these 10 other places in chapter 99. Um, articles, the product of China as provided for in US 
to this subchapter and is provided for in the subheadings enumerated in the US note. The duty provided in the application subheading, which again would be where we were in chapter 85, plus 7.5% if it's coming from China. Um, and this is where you're going to see like 15%. All of this is related to articles, the product of China. Like we're still trade warring with China. And so you're still like, even though it says free over here in the chapter, whatever you're looking at, you know, in this, some of them you see aren't free. Like there's 3%, blah, blah. But you're going to see free probably next to your product. It's not free. If it's like, if I were to have these completely assembled in China and then delivered here for me to resell I'm, there'd be a tariff rate on it. You know, it's not going to be free. So great. That's it. I wanted to cover that again. I know this is super, super boring stuff. I'm not even looking at the comments. Okay. I've got one viewer not saying anything. I know it's boring, but again, you've, you've got to do this if you want to sell your product internationally. And in my case, that's just from the United States to Canada, where hockey is the biggest sport in the world, Canada. And so Hopefully, like I said, this little approach of like, I'll put this link in to where you can like look through the chapters and then take that approach and find your HTS code much quicker than I was able to find mine. Um, great. That's all I'm going to talk about for HTS codes. Before I wrap up, we I am working a lot on, I haven't gotten to a point where I want to stream about it yet, but I am using Flutter. I'm like getting to a point where I'm going to try and recreate my... Um, configuration app that I have for both iOS and Android using Flutter. I'm, I'm still going through a huge learning curve, like binge watching trainings on Flutter and Dart and all this other stuff so that I can get to a point at least where the streams are somewhat engaging and like I'm actually accomplishing things. Right now, it's just me stumbling through like how to get the environment set up, how to get a project formed. But that's what's kind of on the horizon. Like I am looking to get Flutter set up so I can have a unified app between iOS and Android. And because I, I have to, like I've, we we're shipping these every day. I'm shipping puck holders and every day I've got to do that step that I showed previous where I have to program it with the team that the person chose at checkout. And it's not a huge thing, but it would be so much better if I could just snap these things together, put them in boxes. And then in that app, have people configure them to whatever they want to track also, I want to get beyond teams already. Like I want player tracking right now. I'd have to change that manually in the database for people. So, um, enabling a unified app where I can really start iterating on the app and adding more functionality is something that I'm working very hard on right now. And hopefully we'll have some streams on here in the next few weeks of me doing flutter stuff. So I know a bunch of people have mentioned that and we're interested in that. So hopefully, um, that can can provide some value to people as well. So I'd say if you have any questions about HTS codes, ask me, but I don't ask, like, I don't know. Like, you know everything I know now about HTS codes and how to figure out what yours is for your product. So that's going to do it for today's stream. Thanks so much for watching. Again, cooler stuff on the horizon. Stay tuned. And uh, until then, uh, have an amazing rest of your day and rest of your week.